Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Bingo. What a beautiful day to run offshore. Look how flat and calm it is. These are the days that I live for. And today, Caitlin and I are heading offshore. We're going straight south out of Key Largo. We're gonna go off the reef's edge and go out to about 300 feet of water where there's a couple wrecks that I wanted a vertical jig. We'll see if we can hook up doing that. And then I wanted to try some medium high speed trolling for kingfish and wahoo closer to the reef's edge in about 135 feet of water. It's winter time. The kingfish and the wahoo and the mahi are all in more shallow water between 100 to 140 feet. So trolling right off the reef's edge in the Florida Keys can be very fruitful this cold time of the year. I'm dropping the vertical jig down. Send her on down. We were marking fish, but I just couldn't seem to get the bite on. Some days you get bit on every single drop, and some days you drop it 10 times, and not even a noble. Your back is turned to me. Oh. <laughs> All right, another quick start to the video. We're already offshore. We're in 300 feet of water. Try to do some vertical jigging. Sent the vertical jig down probably like 10 times. Not a single bite, even though we marked a bunch of fish. So I guess the they just don't want to bite down here today on the vertical jig. So now we're gonna do some medium high speed trolling for hopefully a wahoo or a kingfish. We're gonna troll three rods. Furthest back, we'll have a weedless squid rig, just in case a mahi shows up. Then we got the bonita lure, and then a big old nomad dive plug. We're gonna put those back now. We're gonna troll them, and hopefully, we get some drag ripping. Yeah, well, I use it. I use it on my face sometimes. I'm trying to videotape over here. Putting the weedless squid rig out first. The big boy. The last but not least, the biggest of all the big boys. The dive plug. All right, now we can go faster. We want to be doing like 10 to 12 miles an hour, medium high speed troll. Fish on, that's a fish on. That's gotta be a fish on. Is there a fish on? Yeah. Woo wee. All right. Of course the weedless squid rig gets hit. Everybody always wants the weedless squid rig. You think it's a bonito? Oh, hey buddy. He's got some spunk to him? Yeah. All right, okay, okay, I see. All right, on the right side of the boat. All right, I'm gonna get that net ready. How do you feel right now? What about you're like, being interviewed? I mean, I'm I'm happy that's a fish. I'm like, kind of like that it's far out, even though it's something small. Probably, They're probably nothing exciting. That's okay. It's a bonito. All right, a little speed demon. Oh, wow, okay. Hey, that's a great bait. I make a little bit of a mistake here. So here's a pro tip at my expense. Don't laugh too hard. I put the boat into neutral when I netted the tuna and the hook got a little wrapped in the net. So it was taking me a little bit longer than I had thought it would take to get the hook and the fish out of the net. And in this time, the boat stopped moving forward into the current and we started to drift backwards and we still had the other two lines out. As our lures start to sink, our boat drifts backwards over them just kind of creating a mess. So pro tip, when you got lines behind the boat, keep it at least in idle or at trolling speeds and don't stop moving unless you plan on bringing all your rods in or else it's just gonna be a tangled mess. Yeehaw.
As I'm pulling on the fishing line, I notice there's some tension on the line. Something ate the dive plug. Oh yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Hi, Gal! How did this happen? Whew. All right. Kingfish are here. Nice work, Igo. That's a big kingfish. That's a fatty. On the freaking nomad. Wow, he got freaking bogonked. Woo! -wee. Pass the boat. Big boy. Kingfish is getting bled out. Okay, I just want yeah. Kingfish for the smoker. Yeah. The big one. I know. It's, he's freaking chunky. Chunky monkey. Right? Put his, yeah. Uh, hold his tail though. I'm just going to okay, cut I his throat. Him. Yeah, you can drop it in there. All right. Sending the beast bag out. El beast. Still kicking. We're back in action. Fish on, fish on. Fish on, come on, put it to him. Hey, that almost looks like a black fin tuna. Let's see this bad boy fish you got. Yeah, keep him on that side. I'm gonna whip the boat around a little bit. Oh my God. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Let me get this. Y'all ready for this? Hold him up for the camera. Uh, <laughs> so cute. No. All right. Fish just like pee. Back to trolling. I think we got a fish on. Is that a fish on? That's got to be a fish on. Real, real, real. I think we got another fish on. What do you think it is? It better, be better be another kingfish if we're gonna throw the freaking smoker on today. We're gonna throw it on with two kingfish. What do we got? I got the gaff ready. Bring it on up. Doesn't look like there's a fish on there. There's no fish. There's no fish. There was a fish. There was, you think so? Splash. You didn't see the splash? The big splash? No, I didn't see oh, it. It was a huge splash. Really? Yeah. Oh, damn. Huge splash. Mm -hmm. He got off. All right, well, this area seems fruitful. 115 feet deep. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Is that just seaweed? Keep reeling. Keep reeling. They don't, don't let that seaweed get off. If there's a shrimp on there, I'll take them. Good work. Keep reeling. You want me to gaff him? Yeah! Hold it up for the camera. You gotta go on this side. The lights, oh, oh, like the lights, the lights on there. Light, light's better from here. Okay, perfect. There. Hold okay, it up. Hold. Woo! Yeah. yeah really killing it today. That's actually a nice piece. I can put that in the aquarium. Okay. Call the aquarium. We took off the big plugs. Even though we just caught a big kingfish on this plug, I have had these ballyhoos sitting in my fridge for weeks now. And I was like, oh, we gotta go, we gotta use these ballyhoos. So, look at his tail. That, what is that thing? That is never going to catch any. That's, oh my Hold on, God. I'm gonna straighten it out. That's, okay, that'll do, that'll work out. All right, so we got, we got two of them. One on that rod and one on on this rod right here. And we're just gonna slow troll them here and we'll see. Do they want the plug more? Do they want the ba naked ballyhoo more? I don't know, let's troll them and find out. Fish on, fish on, fish on. All right, yeah, reel it in. Bring it to this side, come under me or go over me. Now? 
Yeah, bring it to the other side. Keep reeling that sucker. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, that's pretty heavy. Keep reeling. Yeah. Keep reeling. Let's get in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Woo! On the ballyhoo! Don't stop reeling. Don't oh, stop yeah. reeling. Getting heavy now. Here we go. Here we go. It's tweaking. Could be a tuna. Could be a tuna. It wants to go on this side. Okay. Take the rod out. Bring it to that side. Yeah, just reel it like that for now. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, big bonita. Big bonita. On the ballyhoo, okay. Oh, when I saw it shaking, it, I was like, ooh, it's a tuna. But little did we know. Tuna on the bonita. Or, I mean, bonita on the ballyhoo. That's a fat one, though. All right, well, the sun's almost down. I think we should call it. It's five. Yeah, let's call this. Let's call it. Well, that was fun. Yeah. We're back at the dock. And it's, it's time to... It's cold. It is cold. It's a cold day. It's winter time. Look at that. what that was. Then it popped his little head out of the water. It was like a, it was a bird head. Maybe it was a bird. Pull the fish out. Little bossy. Okay. Parkour. Let's see. Parkour. Let's see him. Buddy, come here. Come here. Is he fishy? Come here, Matthew. Is he coming? Yeah. But he's stretchy kidding. Is he real? Is he fish? What do you think? Hey, mouse. Is he fishy? Hi, babies. Hi, kitty cat. Here, buddy. Want to see your fishy? Nice. Lead the way. Come on, mouse. Come on and hop. Slap him on. Hi, uh, yeah. Wow. That was a perfect slap. All right. Yep. That's what she said. I'll just play part of them real quick for a camera. I got Stand over here. Juice on your camera. Real She's quick. so fat. Yeah, it's a really fat kingfish. Short and fat. Elliot, come here. Oh my gosh, that is a fat swordfish. I mean, <laughs> kingfish. <laughs> I just think about swordfish all day. Oh jeez. Oh mother of gosh. I know the mosquitoes are bad. But these are the sacrifices we make. That's a nice piece, huh? <laughs> hey, buddy, come on, come here. Look at that. Holy moly. Where's Mouse at? Come here, buddy. He's about to get fresh piece. Oops. Go for it, bud. Check that out. Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm gonna finish filleting this. Camera ladies running upstairs because there is no seams out here. So we'll see you guys in the kitchen later on.
I got the kingfish in two big bags, and boy, that is a lot of meat. Now we're gonna do a little bit of prepping. Okay, let's take one piece out at a time. That's half of one of the fillets. Looks like that's where you got gaff. So we're gonna take our husk knife here, and we're just gonna cut that bloodline out. Holy moly. Perfect. That's for the cats. I mm -hmm. love that piece. I like to cut off as much red. Anything with blood on it, I think makes it taste a little funny when you smoke it. Holy moly, that's still a huge piece. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm just gonna chunk it into smoke sized pieces. That. Woo, look at that. Wow. Okay, now what we're gonna do, if you will step back. <laughs> in here I have five cups of water, one cup of brown sugar, one cup of white sugar. So it's basically a very briny broth. And we'll put our pieces in upside down, skin facing up. I'll finish filling that up. Come look in here. See, they're all uh, got the bottom layered nicely. Mm -hmm. Now, let's clean this piece up. You see all these bones here and bloodline? Mm -hmm. We don't want that. We do not want that. So we just shave it right off. Oh, it leaving us a very clean piece of kickfish. Oh, that could almost be three pieces. Huh? Big boy piece. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> that is a big boy piece. And then we'll put these on top like uh, skin to skin. So they'll be pointing up like that. Got the last bit chopped up. We're gonna put it all in here right now. Come look at this. How about that? Lots going on in there. I always try to keep it skin to skin as much as I can. Last piece, where can I fit him? Maybe right in there. Now for the, the juice. Now we're gonna add on top of this, a cup of white sugar, another cup of salt, and a cup of brown sugar. And we're gonna let that marinate overnight. How does it look? Oh yeah, nice and juicy. We'll put that in the fridge, leave it in there uh, overnight, or maybe even two days. We'll find out in a second. The kingfish has been brining for about 30 hours, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it out of the bucket. Hold on. I gotta roll up my sleeves for this. We'll take our pieces. Oh, they look good. Just gonna lay them on this rack and kind of just let the juice drip off of them. All right, I'll keep doing that. Boom, look at that. That's a big old pile of fish and uh, Elliot over here is already getting excited. Now we're gonna go turn the trigger on. <laughs> what up Penelope? Say hi to the camera. Yeah, she doesn't really like fish. She's a strange one. She's too good for fish, I guess. I don't even know what kind of cat doesn't like fish, but doesn't like fish. Okay, there we go. Got the Traeger hooked up. Turn the Traeger on the smoke setting. That should start smoking in about five minutes, so I'll start putting the fish on. Bam! Check it out, we got all the fish on here. I'm gonna close her on up. We'll wait for it to start smoking. Two hours, maybe three hours. It should be done once it's like a nice golden brown and now we wait. It's been three hours. We have a beautiful sunset and the fish is a nice golden brown color. What I did was I just opened the Traeger here and I'm just gonna let it cool on the Traeger. 
I don't know why I do this. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I like to let the fish cool on the Traeger like this. I don't know why I just do it like that. So probably in about an hour, I'm gonna come out here, pick them all off, wrap them up and they'll be good for eating. Wow, look at this sunset. Oh, look who's down there. Mouse, hey, you trying to catch a bird? Oh, there goes a couple birds. Wow, look at that sunset. It's so peaceful out here right now. Sunsets and fried kingfish. I mean, pff, smoked kingfish. It's like, uh, wait, is that? 12.30 at night. I got a bunch of smoked fish. I've been keeping it in the, uh, in the oven. It's now room temperature and I just started vacuum sealing it. That is vacuum sealed smoked kingfish. Tomorrow morning, I'm driving to Miami in my boat. Got a couple of friends up there I'm eating and I'm gonna give them a bunch of smoked fish. Look at all this fish vacuum sealed. Got about a hundred gallons of fuel in my boat. Been loading it up. It feels really weird to have like my bag with dress shoes and my dress shirts in there. I got the smoked fish in that cooler. Gonna bring it to my boys. It's a 70 mile trip. It's uh, 1040. We're actually going to North Miami. Like it's about a 75 miles if you go by the channels. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know if it'd be faster to go in the ocean. I don't know, but I'm gonna go in the channels just so I can go 50 miles an hour the whole, whole time, baby. Getting to Miami was actually pretty quick. Only about an hour, maybe an hour and a half from my house because I have to go through a couple extra channels. But the part that takes forever is once you get to Miami, you gotta go through all these channels, pass all these huge yachts, a lot of no wake zones. So getting from South Miami all the way up to North Miami takes a whole nother hour. But I gotta say, the Miami skyline is impressive. It's on the water, there's yachts everywhere. Blue skies, it's Florida, baby. It's winter time, but it's also summertime, if you know what I'm saying. Huge bridges that make you feel so small when you go under them. We got some dolphins that were following the boat coming to say hi, and I gotta say, I had a lot of people yell my channel's name, so it's cool to see subscribers out. It's all over inlet right there. I pulled my boat up to my buddy's house and dock it on his seawall. My buddy's also got a condo from where I can see my boat, so I've been keeping a watchful eye on it. And I gotta say, things went a little bad here. I have four big fenders off the side of my boat between the seawall and my boat. But let me zoom out here and show you what the problem is. I thought I was safe, but I wasn't. So my boat's right here at the Red Arrow. And there was big yachts going down this no wake idle zone. But some yachts were going way faster than idle, creating a huge wake. I'm talking about four or five foot waves coming right up to my boat and slamming it into the seawall. The fenders did little to protect it. And here's the damage that was done after a few days being in Miami. The trim tab was ripped off. The gel coat was ripped off the sides. All the edges were completely torn apart. You can see exposed fiberglass. The underside was scratched up. And these scratches ran all the way down the side of the boat. You know, this wasn't a pretty, this wasn't gonna be a pretty fix. Luckily, it's mainly just gel coat. The fiberglass seems to be pretty untouched. I mean, there's some big chunks of gel coat missing. A lot of fiberglass exposed, but I can fix this. Poor me, right? Nah, look what I learned. My buddy Alex showed me how to do some fiberglass work. I took some polyester resin, mixed in some fumed silica and some milled fibers with it, made like a peanut butter paste, filled all the cracks up, sanded it down, got it looking real sharp again, put a brand new gel coat on there, and she's looking much better. You wanna go see her? A little context. I was supposed to have a guy come and fix the boat for me, and it probably would have cost me around $2,000. Luckily, he didn't show up when he was supposed to. So I decided I'm just gonna do this myself. I learned a little bit about fiberglass and gel coat work. And she is looking brand new. 
fix the trim tab, fix the whole side of the boat, put a new um, bottom paint coat on it. Gonna drop her back in the water today and it's back to fishing. I know, sometimes I don't upload a video for a week or something and you guys are wondering what's going on. Well, you know, I deal with problems like this. But if you would have been following my vlog channel, you would have known what was going on. Because when I'm not putting out fishing videos, or when I can't put out fishing videos because I got, you know, boat problems, I'm still posting on my daily vlog channel. Just like little five minute behind the scene videos. If you want to check those out, Heiko Winkler channel, I'll link it in the video description below. While I was in Miami, the actual reason I went to Miami was because we had a couple of NFT art conventions on top of Art Basel, and we went to a bunch of VIP events, all to do with NFTs. We met with huge developers. We met some big teams that did big NFT launches. I'm talking about $80 million in two days. Big launches. I talked to these guys and I learned some crazy things about NFTs. Like most people think when you're buying an NFT, you're basically buying and selling pictures. That is not at all what is going on. My brother and I, we started our own NFT project to learn more about what is an NFT. I'm actually working on a video right now that goes completely into all that crazy stuff. Next time that any of your friends are having a conversation about crypto or NFTs, I guarantee you when you watch my video, you will be the smartest person in that conversation because I'm gonna show you the back end of what an NFT actually is the code behind it and what it actually does and what you're actually buying and owning and the technology behind it is epic it's just extremely misunderstood so if you want to watch that video i'll be posting it next week sometime on the heiko wakler channel go check it out link in video description below i got i was gonna say i got another fishing video coming up next but i think i might have a little something extra special coming out on this channel for you guys it is a catch and cook i believe right here in the backyard. What could that be? I don't know. Oh, I almost fell over my beehive. But anyway, stay tuned to find out and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.